Okay, so this is day two of zombie proofing our homestead. Last couple days, it's been down to the 20s. So the seasons of frozen waters, frozen animal waters is upon us. Hey pigs, hey pigs. I didn't soak their feed. Hey pigs. I didn't soak their feed because I knew it would just freeze if I did. Hey pigs. What I love about living in this area that we do is it gets cold at night, but then during the day, the sun's gonna come out. There's Zeke. <laughs> and still, there is no rain in sight. Hasn't been rain, it seems like, for like three months. I'm still waiting for this thing to fill up. The plan is for today is continue fencing. We just did our H brace yesterday, my first H brace, and we're gonna, gonna continue that and hopefully we can get to a point where we can start stretching some woven wire. I think I have so much fencing to do, I think I'm always gonna be doing fencing for the rest of my life. All right, turkeys. We still have six turkeys. These guys don't want to grow. Heritage breed turkeys that we picked up from a local farm. And yeah, they're like 22 weeks. At a certain point, you gotta say, okay, I'm done buying feed for you because they're not growing that much. The fall colors this year have been really good. It's probably because we haven't got any rain because everything's really dry.
trying to get the center. It looks about right. Now we gotta put our diagonal wire on. We're gonna do this a little bit different. I have tools now. Compared to our last video, it's gonna be a little bit more different. We're still gonna use this ratchet thingamajig. Cause I have a bunch of these all of a sudden. And then before I just wrap this wire around it. But now we have some crimp sleeves. These are not my vitamins and a crimper. We're gonna, there's two holes in there, so one hole is going on this end. It's kind of like a loop that you're making. Then we'll use this crimper. Put that in the slot. And this is like a, a long, this is a long crimp sleeve. And then you, let's do two of them. You just slide that along. A little awkward actually, this is my first time using this, so. It's pretty easy to push down. It's just kind of awkward to set it in there and then, because it's kind of cumbersome. And that's it, nice and tight. I don't have to worry about winding it around because that was a little little bit much. So yeah, crimper. Now we're gonna go from end to end just like how we did. Crazy wires. I'm gonna double it up though. I'm gonna double up this one. I still don't have the proper ratchet that you just pop, pop, pop. Seems like that would be a lot easier than using this. Okay, I don't know if that just bent or if it broke. Dang. It's so important to have really good pliers. Come on. Keep it going. It's getting there. Oh, I think this staple is kind of in the way. I think that's what was holding me up. I'm trying to reuse some of these staples. And I'm gonna add staple up top. I'm not gonna put it tight. Just kind of loosely have it on there just so that way. Just hold that in place. I think I was way ahead of myself when I installed this one. According to my line here, I'm a little off. Give me a chance to use this T-post puller. So nice. I gotta push it back a little bit. We got a line, straight line, it makes it a lot easier. We're putting the woven wire on this side that way when we have animals, bigger animals that are inside here, they're pushing out and it'll be less likely they could pull out the staples. But then again, if there's an animal trying to come in, the four high tensile uses this pole. We're gonna avoid that pole and just move it over in more of a straight line. So I need to add some T posts in between that wood post and this wood post 
and then between those two uh, but it's pretty straight it looks like it kind of curves and then curves it looks like it kind of curves like a almost like an oval from that wood post we have a T post eight feet this is gonna be another eight feet right here we're gonna try to go follow this line yeah, I was a little off. Without this line, I was off. Now, ideally, I would love to put all wood posts, but you know, that's a difference of $20 a post versus, you know, six bucks. Plus I have some of these posts just laying around. Yeah, buddy, look at this. It's tight, there we go. Well, I wouldn't say that was faster than my first H post, but, but we're, at least we're getting more comfortable with using the various tools and various things and digging a hole, you know, figuring that out, the pin, this wire. From here, we're gonna start that woven wire fence and then we're gonna stretch it this way. Um, after we lay it out, tie it in on the end, and then stretch it. I still have to add another H post coming off of this corner piece this way, and then we gotta do another woven wire that goes up this way. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to enclose everywhere that I possibly can. I did a figure eight two times. So this should even be just double the strength as we stretch that wire and it just kind of pulls everything together and hopefully this is this won't slant it's already slanting um, but these are all concreted in all the previous horse fencing is anyways it's not a perfectly straight line uh, but I think it should be all right and this is like a good a good practice run for me for those of you following at home uh, you know say 20 bucks for that post, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, so $60 in posts uh, just for an H brace. That's why I say I'm super thankful for of it half half of it being done. I thought I would get to the woven wire today, but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen, so hopefully tomorrow we can get back at it.